G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, we're going to be taking a look at this. Now, this is the Idea Fly. This is meant to be the Grasshopper drone. And to be honest, I've heard some funny things about this. I've seen some positive reviews and also some negative reviews of this. So uh, I'm really interested to be sticking this on the bench. Uh, pretty much this is a five inch frame and it claims it can reach up to 230 kilometers per hour. So, uh, I, to be honest, that I definitely don't think that's true because I don't think this thing's going to be breaking any uh, quad speed records unless it's rocking maybe some six inch and with some serious modification. But in saying that, it really does look like a pretty decent... Uh, <clears throat> that battery goes off quite a lot. It really does look like a pretty sick uh, little racing quad. There's some things I can already tell I'd like to change, but it's rocking some awesome motors and it's got like 30 amp ESCs and F3 flight controller. So uh, I'm keen to stick it on the bench and then uh, have a look at what it comes with and then take it out and give it a bit of a spin. All right, let's get started. Alrighty, uh, so uh, before I get started, I just want to mention it does come in like a rubberized sort of or a carry case, a little uh, sort of suitcase sort of thing, which is pretty cool with some foam inside instead of just a cardboard box. So that's one little nice tip. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the quadcopter in detail, but uh, just very quickly, I want to mention these extras. And then before we jump into the quadcopter, I will talk about the charger a little bit. So what we get is some extras. Uh, you get some four blade, uh, bull, uh, four blade, you get some pull nose props. So four of those, they're 50, 45s. Uh, and these little optional extras, I think this is a very nice inclusion. So you get a ton of zip ties and you even get some heat shrink and uh, little straps of Velcro, which is nice. And also your rubber ducky uh, VTX antenna. And then, uh, depending on what kit you get, uh, some kits come with a radio or not, but you will also get this awesome little E4 balance charger. And I love this thing because I do a lot of uh, charging all the time. You always hear those battery chargers going off. Uh, and most of the time I'm parallel charging or charging a heap of batteries at once. But sometimes uh, there's one of those batteries that's a different size or a different sort of cell rating. And uh, I just want to stick it in here. It's one of those one-off sort of batteries. This thing is so simple. You just plug it in. Uh, plug in uh, if it's a 4S, 3S or 2S. And set how many amps you want to charge at. One, two or three. And it's ready to rock and roll. And it charges each cell individually. So an awesome little charger. I find myself actually, this is one of the most useful bits of the kit. I find myself using this all the time. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse Excuse me, let's talk about the main attraction. So let's jump in and start talking about this quadcopter. So uh, one of the main things, I guess, and you're probably gonna notice this when you look at it straight away, it looks like a grasshopper, and that's why it's called the grasshopper, I think. Uh, it's got this sort of funny face plate here, sort of, I guess, it's got some eyes and a little mouth. Uh, it's got some antennas right here, which I guess that's strange. You would use them for your, uh, maybe your receiver antennas. And it's also got this big plastic, plastic case sort of across the top, which is meant to hold the battery in. Now. Here's, uh, here's my first issue. To be honest, this thing looks pretty weak and flimsy. So for the review, I'm actually gonna rip this off because uh, in my this to me, this is pretty close to a racing quadcopter, so we don't really want it looking like a toy or acting like a toy. So this part is totally unnecessary. I know it's meant to protect the battery, but if you've got good Velcro straps anyway, that's not going to be an issue. And uh, depending on how you sort of, if your battery's a little bit thicker, you don't want your props, if they were uh, gonna clip in here, you don't want your props hitting this. So I'm going to be taking this off for my review, so I'm going to do that straight uh, right away, and then we can talk about the actual components in here. Alrighty, so uh, now I guess starting, we'll work our way from the outside and work our way in, and I think that looks much better, uh, much cleaner here. You can see just how sort of minimalist it is on here. Uh, much better with this cover off, that only took about two seconds. Uh, let's start out... <laughs> Let's start on the outside. So on the outside here, you are rocking some 5045 bullnose props and they say V2 on there. Are they actual Dell or are they just a bit of a clone of a Dell? They feel very much uh, like the uh, V1 Dells actually. So I'm not 100% sure how these props will go. Uh, it's a bit steeper than I usually like to run on a on a five inch prop, but luckily the motor underneath is a 2205 2300 kV motor and they're idea fly branded motors. So I'll be very interested to see how they go, but they feel very very smooth anyway when I'm just looking at them right here but I do have one sort of issue they send you some spare props but why on earth do they send you some of these these are the 50 40 nose 50 45 bull nose props and look what would be great is I'm all for having different options so you can test them out but why on earth did you send us one set of these and one set of these that means if you bust one of these props you've got to replace the whole lot and put this on there so definitely uh, the first thing I can say is send a spare set of props absolutely but make sure they're the same ones included we, we don't want these two different options if you're going to make us replace the whole thing so either two sets of these 
or two sets of these. To be honest, these are probably the better ones to put on there. I'm really liking the Tri-Blade. Right now, so I spoke about the motors a little bit, and that is that 2205-2300 kV, in my personal opinion, is the sweet spot for running five inch props. Any higher kV, so say if you had the 2600 kV, I really think you need a high quality battery because you can suck way too many amps out when you're using maybe a 2600 kV battery. So I definitely think that uh, 2300 is probably the sweet spot for rocking five inch props. Now moving inwards, we've got some BO Heli ESCs. Now just a word of warning, these are not BO Heli S ESCs, so that could be a little bit of an upgrade if these were BO Heli S. Uh, but I have heard good things about these uh, Raptor ESCs and the good thing is 30 amps means uh, you're gonna have no worries whatsoever with blowing some of these so you can pretty much hit max throttle and not have any issues that you're going to uh, burn an ESC. Moving further inwards, uh, you can see in just here, we are rocking an SPF3 flight controller. Uh, look, these are these are pretty good, reliable flight controllers. Some people have issues with these little parts snapping off. I've run a heap in the past, so uh, no issues from me whatsoever so far. But one thing to note, some people have had those little these little headers just here snap off. So that's something to think about. And if there was an improvement, it'd be great if these were just directly soldered to the board without using these sort of connectors right here. Uh, and then underneath that, I don't know how well you can see this, we've got a little PDB just here, and I believe that this little switch right here is for turning your LEDs on and off. And one cool thing, they've put the uh, USB on the outside, so that shows some forward thinking there by Gearbest, because uh, the last thing you want is to have to take this top plate off to uh, plug a USB in and out. Towards the front, we've got our FPV camera. Now, this is an unbranded FPV camera. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so this is an unbranded FPV camera, but it looks very, very much like the HS 1177, possibly with a little wider lens. So we'll have to go and fly around and see just how that goes. But that feels nice and snug in the front. And one thing I really do like about this racer, it's very, very well protected in here. So there's a lot of carbon around here protecting this camera. And you can get some, well, that's probably going to be way too, way too high, but you can get some insane tilt right here. I guess if you had it tilted up that much, you would have to actually take out this front standoff because that is looking very, very high. So, uh, but I really like how much protection is around the camera just there. Now, the other main component of the quad, and that's moving towards the back here, this is a 40 channel uh, VTX, a 200 milliwatt VTX, which is great, uh, but they've uh, soldered this thing in, in a way, and connected it with some heat shrink that you can't actually access the dip switches. So that's a bit of a, a letdown right there. So if you do happen to want to change the channel or you're racing with some friends, it's going to be a bit of a pain to take this out, and then you're going to have to probably use some of those little Velcro straps. That's probably why they gave them to you, those little Velcro stickers, to put the VTX back in. So at the moment, it looks super neat, but you actually don't have a way to change the VTX. And it's worth mentioning that this is an RP SMA uh, VTX just here as well. So it's not going to work with your Fat shark antennas or the the standard ones anyway so you will need to get some up because they're all sma so you will need to get some rp sma antennas and speaking of antennas uh it does only come with this little rubber ducky just here so that screws onto the back and that's pretty much how you're going to get your video out of this antenna they're not these are not the best uh and i've done some tests on them in the past but for these sort of quadcopters i really think you need uh you need a bit of a a bigger better antenna and we have these ones just here these clover leaves so this is a tbs uh one this is what i'm going to be using so uh, this really doesn't do it justice. So that's why I'm going to be using this antenna and we're simply going to screw this onto the back. Hopefully, I'm, hopefully I'm spinning that the right way. But uh, here's something I wish they would also change. There's no real way to sort of Velcro that down or zip tie this down. There's no little slits or anything like that. So if I have a hard crash with this, I'm pretty sure my antenna is going to be fine, but it is going to snap off the SMA connector inside here, in the RP SMA connector in here. So uh, that is something I think they could change because I'm a little bit worried about the integrity of, or the durability of this VTX when it happens in a crash. Actually looking at this, there's actually room for a right angle little RP SMA connector to go right in here. So underneath that VTX, so your antenna and it can come out the top. So uh, I, they really need to include that. That's probably like one or two dollars and that would make this a lot more durable. It would mean your antenna could come out the top like that and be connected to the uh, the little right angle right there. So I'm gonna see if I can track one of those down because that'd be great uh, if I could do that. It would definitely protect the VTX because I don't feel like breaking it in a crash. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see if I've got one of those. Over here to the side, we've got our XT60 connector and I love how it's actually, uh, it doesn't have too much leeway so it's not gonna be going anywhere and it's got this little rubber grommet 
element around it as well so it's not going to get cut up by the carbon frame. Uh, some of the other features probably worth pointing out right here. Now it is a solid base plate so uh, across here it is a 210 millimeter frame. Fairly thick carbon. I think it's about three millimeters right there on the main base plate so you shouldn't have any issues with breaking some of these arms. And I can't believe I haven't done this yet. Uh, we should probably weigh the thing. So let's stick the thing on some scales and see how much it is. Rightio, so without the antenna it's coming in actually super light. So it's 316 grams. Now, just to give you a bit of, comp of a comparison, that is a, and it feels really, 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 really light in my hands as well. Uh, I'm going to put on, say, I've got my little Martian frame just here. Uh, and yeah, it does have one little GoPro part and an antenna, but let's see how much that's, well, that's coming in at 380 grams. So this quad, it feels really, really light, which is great if you're after some high top speed, which is what it claims at 230 kilometers an hour. So uh, yeah, 215, 216 grams, definitely a super light racing quadcopter. So it uh, might live up to some very, very high speeds. Now uh, it does have some LEDs in the front right here. So you've got two in uh, what looks like the eyes, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of those LEDs. I think they're a waste of time and probably a waste of money. It'd be good if they could remove those. Uh, and it has, this is probably something a little bit concerning. This wire just here, I believe this is meant to be running to one of the little pads in here to control the uh, LEDs, but I don't know where that's meant to go. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, where that wire is meant to go and see if I can get that working or not, or see if it's gonna cause any shorts. I can definitely tell it's a signal wire because uh, it's running against these two, the red and the black one in here, which would be controlling the LEDs. So I've got no worries about it shorting out anything. I just wonder about where where is that meant to be going. Uh, and then we've also got some LEDs on the back right here, and there are also programmable ones. So you can put that into clean flight and see, and you can change it set up to do a couple of different things. So uh, whether you wanna set up for braking there's a whole lot of options you can do through clean flight or beta flight uh, with these programmable ESCs and then finally uh, right here we've got like a bit of a velcro strap now this is a bit of a letdown because I hate these sort of straps they're not rubberized they're not going to hold your battery in very well at all and it doesn't really have anything to sort of clamp down and hold your battery nice and snug on the frame either it doesn't have any rubber or anything like that so here would be another improvement if they could just switch out uh, switch this out for a nicer strap say uh, I got some here so I've got I'm going to be using some of my UAV futures straps because uh, I've got those made and I'm pretty pumped about using those. So I've used them in the past and they're working great. Uh, but that would be a good inclusion if they could just put a little rubberized strap and maybe a little bit of some of those like M3 sticky pads you can put on here uh, where it's just sort of foam on one side and it could definitely hold and secure your battery in place. And then right here, uh, I think this is meant to stop your battery sliding forwards in a crash, uh, but these are plastic, so they're just gonna snap off right there, So, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, so if this is meant to hold your battery in place and stop it sliding upwards this way, I definitely think that they should be metal or there should be some other little bracket right there. Now you do get one of these in the kit, and I didn't mention this at the start before, but you do get this little battery. So this is a 4S battery, and this is one of the first, can I just say, one of the first ready to fly kits, or almost ready to fly kits that I've got sent to me. Uh, in this cheaper sort of these cheaper sort of versions that comes with a battery and not only just a battery a decent battery so it's a perfect size for racing it's 1300 milliamp hours a 4s which is great so you're gonna get some awesome speed and it's at 45c now 45c it's not the worst C rating, it's not the best. I would like to see it up around 50 or 60 C preferably, but I'm not complaining. It's for a, for a beginner quad, I definitely think this is gonna have more than enough punch, especially being on 4S. Now, if you look here at the front, you can see that uh, it does have this sort of sloping part right here. And my first impression was that looks stupid. That looks ridiculous. What is the point of that? That's just excess carbon that's going to uh, weigh your quad down. Get rid of that, you don't want that at all. And then I had a bit of a think. And uh, this was one part, and I don't know if this was a design feature or not, but this is actually a really good platform for your GoPro or whatever. If you had a run cam or a Mobius, that would be even better to sit on there. Actually, I'm gonna see if I can find an old Mobius. Alrighty, so here it is. Here's a bit of a shell of a Mobius anyway. So uh, if, if, you're, if you're rocking a GoPro, this is a great place to attach it, but my chair is squeaking away here. But actually, if you're running one of those sort of slim down parts, this looks perfect. This looks like a great place to attach your FPV, uh, FPV. This looks like a great place to attach your HD camera uh, in a very secure sort of way. It'd be just a bit of a shame. There's no little Velcro cutouts just here where you could actually 
strap it around. So you're probably going to have to use these standoffs that go across here in some sort of way to hold it down. But that is a very, very nice, stable, large piece of carbon that you can strap your uh, recording camera to. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be uh, strapping in my recording camera right here. I'm going to be installing a little receiver because I've got a spare receiver lying around. I'm going to put in my own FPV antenna on the back and change out the Velcro straps. Then I'm going to put this in, take it out and uh, give it a bit of a test flight and see how it goes and see if it is capable of reaching anywhere near those speeds that it claims. Well, one other thing, I almost forgot this and this is this has actually made this even better. I didn't realize this. This is actually running beta flight. So I thought it was going to be running clean flight. So the firmware that's on the flight controller. So this is the first ready to fly quad that I've got. Uh, it's not the Atom, I guess. This is the first cheaper sort of one that I've gotten that's rocking some awesome firmware. So it's rocking the beta flight in here, which to be honest, in my opinion, makes a night and day difference uh, between flying around. So uh, I've got some even better expectations of this thing now, knowing that it is actually, they've even shipped it with the beta flight firmware. So massive points for that. Right, so here it is all ready to go. So I've put my receiver in, I've got my different antenna on the back. Uh, let's take it outside and see how she goes. Rightio, so uh, here it is out in the local sort of cricket pitch that's near my house and uh, just taking off there. I want to just say sorry too about the uh, the GoPro cover lens. I didn't really want to risk smashing my camera on a brand new sort of Maiden of a quad. Uh, so that's why I've got this. This is usually what I run on my, uh, my Martian frame. So that's why you can see the outside there. But let's have a look at the flight footage. So it's uh, definitely got some pace you can see right here. I sort of uh, give it some throttle and it's definitely jumping uh, across that field very, very quickly. Uh, but the sort of the, the strange or there's a little bit of a power loop so it's more than capable of doing some acro stuff but the strange part is around that center stick i don't know if it felt like a little bit snappy or a little bit sloppy it, it's a really hard to describe i guess um a little bit unstable when you're flying around you can see how it's sort of jostling back and forth on sort of those movements like over correcting and then up and then down a little bit so that's definitely how i felt when it was flying around it was kind of difficult i guess to try and get it in a stable hover um but it's definitely got some speed and uh, if you're trying to whip it around some corners, definitely got no issues whatsoever there. But it, it was more just those sort of funny movements, like I'm trying to trying to adjust that just a little bit uh, and coming along that straight line, I was trying to get it nice and smooth and it felt like it was just jerking up or down or pulling to the left or the right. So that was a little bit tricky sort of trying to tame this beast. I'm not 100% sure what was going on. Now I don't, even, I don't know if it needed some tuning or something like that, but I see that little rock just there, that's what I'm talking about, so I don't know if it needs some uh, adjustments with the PIDs, but uh, I'm not 100% sure what was going on. So it's got plenty of power and I'm sure it should be, be, it should be able to do these manoeuvres, I just don't know why it feels a little bit unstable sort of in those sort of, almost like you're trying to hover it, uh, hover it stage or something, or if you're trying to bring it in, I found it a little bit harder to control. Rightio, so with all that said and done, how do I actually feel about the quadcopter? And uh, I gotta say I'm kind of on the fence about it because one, it's not a bad quadcopter, two, it's got heaps of good ideas, but three, I don't think it quite makes it or uh, there's a couple of little things, a couple of little nuances that uh, kind of bug me or things that I just wish they'd change in an extra revision to turn it from just being an average quadcopter into something you can actually pick up and take to the races and do decently. So all those things like speaking about the VTX or the Velcro strap or accessing the little dip switches, uh, maybe put some Bell Heli SESCs on here and another one like why do we need it to look like a toy? This is not a toy racer, so uh, you definitely shouldn't be marking it, marketing it like that. Uh, you don't need it to look like a grasshopper. This thing, uh, it's meant to go really, really fast. Um, so you don't need you don't need this this flimsy canopy on the top, and you definitely don't need all this funny carbon or lights or antennas or anything like that. Because to me, if you're trying to build one of these racing quadcopters, and that's definitely what this is. Uh, you really need to change some of those things and focus. Have one goal in mind. So if you want to make a racing quadcopter, go after that. If you want to have a toy quadcopter that looks like a bug, that should be your goal. So this is definitely sitting sort of in the middle and I really feel like it's more racing quadcopter than toy, but some of those toy sections are holding it back a little bit. Now don't get me wrong, like if I did take this out and had nothing else to fly and uh, I'd tune this one a little bit because I did find the rates a little bit funny when I was flying around and maybe it was just the air mode or the, the beta flight version 2.6 that this one was rocking, but I did feel a little bit funny in sort of those low stick movements. It felt like a little bit a little bit jerky, I'm not 100% sure how to explain it. But uh, yeah, if I didn't have a quad and someone said, do you want to fly this? I'd be more than happy to be like, sure, I'll uh, enjoy some FPV flying this thing around. I just wish they'd fix some of those things up. So overall, uh, I would say an average quadcopter. Not bad, but not great. So somewhere sitting in the middle. One of the things I did have a bit of an issue with was uh, how it says it can go to 230 kilometers per hour. Cause whoever tested that, 
uh, I definitely don't think it was getting anywhere near there because on my full punch outs I reckon uh, it would be close to maybe hitting 80 or 90 kilometers per hour so anyway uh, I'm gonna leave you with the rest of this flight footage I'll leave a link for this down below in the description uh, subscribe for more FPV related content and as always happy flying